last week also she didn't any anyway, i record uh, it's fine i can say it's metabolic reaction so this is the metabolic reaction so i don't want to tell this metabolic reaction i just write metabolic reaction right metabolic reaction and i have to say in which light energy so this word is very important light energy so metabolic reaction in which light energy is captured and convert this is also very important so basically light energy converted into chemical energy now this word is also very important because if someone write the definition some words can be changed it's fine but we can't change the keyword the keywords are light energy is captured and converted into chemical energy right so you can make a comma uh, which is stored in the bonds of a carbohydrate a lipids and a proteins now you see how many keywords it's important for this one light and light energy converted to chemical energy and this energy is stored in the bonds of carbohydrate lipid and protein you can write this in a different words but different uh, the way but we can't uh, we cannot uh, take this word out light energy converted to chemical energy and the energy is in the bonds of these molecules because there is a, a structured question at the end in the past papers not in the new syllabus in the old syllabus and it is asked directly what is photosynthesis when student write it is a reaction between carbon dioxide and water and then uh, carbon uh, glucose is produced and oxygen is also produced and this uh, needs sunlight that definition is completely out of the resource book definition the student cannot get the marks because examiner the reviewer will completely uh, rely on this marking scheme if it is something out of the marking scheme examiner will not bother to give marks because it is not in the marking scheme so examiner is in the safe side but student is not in the safe side so we have to always follow certain things definitions according to the resource book right so photosynthesis is light energy converted to chemical energy and the energy is stored in the bonds of carbohydrate lipid and protein you can write this into two sentences it's fine but i just want to write in one sentence because it's a definition we can make in a one sentence right uh, it's a metabolic reaction you can also write it's a it is a metabolic reaction in which light energy converted to chemical energy this energy now stored in the bonds of carbohydrate lipid and proteins right so this is an important thing to remember the definition of photosynthesis and after that uh, minor points the plants are the most important things other than that we should also remember some uh, uh, algae and uh, bacteria 
they can also do photosynthesis but the significance is very high in plants now why it is important in plants why it is not that important in algae and bacteria I think uh, you have the idea but you can't express in words right so if you have the idea if I ask question why plants are important in photosynthesis not algae and bacteria right so to find the correct answer for that question uh, we can like we can uh, look this the significance importance of photosynthesis okay if bacteria and algae they cannot provide food but plants can provide food so photosynthesis provide food energy for other organisms all other organisms depend on photosynthesis plant produce this food carbohydrate lipid and protein and other animals other organisms depend on this so it's food second one uh, this gives us oxygen oxygen is required for aerobic respiration third one uh, plant take carbon dioxide and release oxygen so it maintain carbon dioxide oxygen balance and the other one uh, it gives us fossil fuel petrol diesel uh, kerosene oil all the oil is given by the fossil fuel third one last one uh, it reduced the global uh, warming decrease uh, why is that uh, we are going to learn in the future carbon dioxide can increase global temperature plant absorb carbon dioxide and plant try to reduce carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere right uh, this is also very important I think at the end we have a questions Again, structured question. This has been also asked in the past. So you can remember this uh, importance of photosynthesis. Okay, now when you look at the previous one, why algae and bacteria are not that important? because algae we can't use as a food but it can uh, give us oxygen and it can also take uh, carbon dioxide in and uh, we don't know whether algae contributed for the fossil fuel in the past uh, anyway the algae distribution is less than the plants so its significance is less uh, bacteria there are few uh, bacteria they can do photosynthesis and it is also very less okay then uh, we also discuss the reaction of photosynthesis so we can define divide photosynthesis into two so one is light dependent reaction other one is light independent reaction light dependent reaction and light independent reaction light dependent reaction light independent reaction we will see what is this we will see what is this in details we also divide photosynthesis based on the plants and again two type all the plants in the world can put into two baskets one is called c3 plants other one is called C4 plants. What is C3? C indicate carbon. And this indicate three carbons. And this indicate carbon, four carbon. So why this plants considered as three carbon 
and why this plant consider as four carbons. So I give one example of three carbon rice. I give one example of this maize. So this plant, C3 plant, why it is called? Because it is first stable molecule is C3, have C3, it has C3. So if we consider this is series of reaction, let's say like A, A become B, B become C, C become D. In this reaction, the stable compound has three carbon. Because of that, we call C3 plant. And here, maize, it's same. A, B, C, D, E. So when it's going like this reaction, uh, the stable compound has four carbons. We will again going to learn in detail why C3 plants are important, why C4 plants are important. Okay, uh, when we talk light dependent reaction, we have to learn chloroplast. So we have to uh, again recall the structure of chloroplast. So it has two membranes. One is called outer membrane. This is called inner membrane. And inside, we can find a very important structure called thylakoids. So thylakoids, we can see as collection of thylakoids, not single thylakoid. And the structure is called granum. The plural is grana. Granum is a singular, plural is grana. Grana is a stack of thylakoid. It's a column of thylakoids. And here again another one like this. So we can find uh, many places this kind of a thylakoid. And these thylakoids are linked with another thylakoid. This link is called lamella. The link of the thylakoid is called lamella. And the inside is called stroma. So inside is called stroma, which is fluid fill space with some kind of enzymes. And we can also find a small DNA molecule circular shape. Like this circular DNA. And we can also find ribosome. These ribosomes are 70S. That is very important, not 80S, 70S. And we can also find a starch grain. And sometimes we can also find lipid droplets. You should be able to draw this one and you should be able to label the structures because this is again very important organelle and sometimes uh, you should be able to identify this in electro, uh, electro microscope pictures like this so if you look at from the electron microscope you see uh, there's slight difference it's a uh, biconcave uh, biconvex like here it's like a convex and here also a bit of convex and these are the thylakoids and here it's a laminae the link and we can't see very clearly the 70s ribosomes and the circular DNA 
but we can find this kind of uh, structures. Maybe these represent the lipid droplets, and uh, we cannot really uh, see the outer membrane and inner membrane. This is the membrane. This should be outer. This is inner, but it is not very clearly visible. We need a better magnification to see the cell membrane, inner and outer membrane. But a standard electron microscope picture, uh, we should identify at least these are uh, granum and thylakoids and lamellae and the stroma. Because in exam, uh, there's a chance of giving the electron microscope and uh, you are asked to identify at least uh, two, three structured. So it is important that you can identify this as a chloroplast and the important structures, right? Okay, uh, then uh, we also looked uh, what is the structure of the thylakoid. So if you take one thylakoid, they are like this. So it is a disc-like structure and this is made out of cell membrane. So we call it this membrane. And there is a no uh, specific name to a uh, label inside. We just say inside of thylakoid. So thylakoid has two structures thylakoid membrane and inside of the thylakoid but the membrane is very important because a special structure is located in the membrane and it is called photosystem abbreviated by PS So if we a uh, little bit enlarge the membrane, we can see phospholipid bilayer and inside the phospholipid bilayer, so we can find this uh, photosystem like this. So if you uh, try to recall the uh, previous knowledge of cell membrane, it is a phospholipid bilayer. Within the phospholipid bilayer, you can find a proteins. It's a little bit similar, phospholipid bilayer. Inside the phospholipid bilayer, we can find these photosystems. So the photosystems, a two type. One is called photosystem 1. Other one is called photosystem 2. Photosystem 1 has another name. Uh, it is also called PS700. This one is also called PS680. Why it is called a 700 and 608 this time? This indicate the wavelength. This also indicate the wavelength of the light. That means PS1 can absorb the wavelength of 700 efficiently. PS2 can absorb wavelength of 680 nanometer efficiently. Uh, then uh, if we take the photosystem, uh, it is like this. Okay. So this area represent something called light. 
uh, light harvesting complex light harvesting complex so we can identify two regions one is light harvesting complex and the other one the middle region is called a reaction center a reaction center right so if we look uh, what we can find in the photosystem we can find pigments the photosystem is consist of pigments and a protein pigments and proteins but we don't uh, focus much about these uh, pigments uh, protein sorry proteins we only interested about the pigments we are not talking about the proteins but we are going to talk about the pigments so in this pigment again uh, we can find two types of pigments what are the pigments one is called chlorophyll other one is called carotenoids chlorophyll and carotenoids so again we can divide chlorophyll into two chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and where we can find this uh, pigments we can find pigments in this light harvesting complex so pigments can be found in this light harvesting complex okay uh, in the notes if you look uh, it used a word called primary electron acceptor primary electron acceptor so what is this primary electron acceptor and where it is located not mentioned in the notes it just say primary electron acceptor and very important thing we should understand out of this chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and carotenoids so then we have three type of pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and carotenoids and what is the most important pigments the most important pigments are chlorophyll a right the chlorophyll a okay now we have a question why it is considered as chlorophyll a the most important pigment why chlorophyll a is the most important pigment okay we can find two answers for that one so chlorophyll a light absorption in light absorption chlorophyll a can absorb 
more light than other pigments chlorophyll a can absorb more light so shall we write chlorophyll a best in light absorption so this is just for remembering best in light it can absorb a uh, higher amount of light this is one thing the second thing chlorophyll a involved in the main pigment in light dependent reaction so I can write it here uh, the nodes use key pigments in light uh, dependent reaction key pigment in light dependent reactions now we understand why chlorophyll A is important in uh, photosynthesis so it is considered as key pigment okay uh, many textbook uh, they use different uh, uh, different type of uh, classification for pigments some textbook use primary pigment and accessory pigments primary pigments are chlorophyll other all pigments come under accessory pigment but the resource book uh, used Campbell uh, textbook if you look Campbell textbook Campbell textbook also use same wording and they use key pigments are chlorophyll A and they don't use the word accessory pigment they use chlorophyll and carotenoids so two pigments are important that is uh, chlorophyll and carotenoids why chlorophyll A is important because it absorbs the highest light and it is involved in directly light dependent reaction so if you look at this uh, photosystem the pigments are distributed everywhere so none of the textbooks say this pigment is here this pigment is here this pigment is here like that but if you look the resource book this word is there primary electron acceptor so just write it is in the in resource book so where is this primary electron acceptor? This primary electron acceptor is in the reaction center. So primary electron acceptor is this. And in the reaction center, we can also find chlorophyll A molecule. So here is a one and here is another one. So this is a chlorophyll A molecule. We will see in the light dependent reaction what is the role of primary electron acceptor, what is the role of chlorophyll A, right? Otherwise, chlorophyll A can absorb light, chlorophyll B can absorb light, carotenoid can absorb light. So all pigment can absorb light. Okay, just to summarize, there are two types of photosystem, photosystem 1 and 2. Typical appearance of photosystem are like this. And they have a two uh, area, areas, one is uh, light harvesting complex, this one. And the other one is a reaction center. Light harvesting complex, complex and reaction center. So reaction center, we can also find primary electron acceptor and chlorophyll A molecules. It's a pair of chlorophyll A molecule. So this is called pair of chlorophyll A molecule. I think uh, uh, it is important that you should also uh, draw these diagrams and keep in the same place in the notes.
just to understand because in the resource book uh, use very less amount of diagrams but the Campbell book is again very complex to uh, they have a lot of diagrams and these diagrams are also very complex they have uh, more information so we take only the important thing for the exam and uh, like short notes uh, revision notes like things you can make these diagrams and keep in the same place so we can look the diagrams you can remember easily because rather than text uh, diagrams are very important to remember quickly okay uh, next 